Donald or Douglas? Donald and Douglas were very important assets to the Fat Controllers Railway, but when they first started, they were nothing but cheeky and troublesome. But they have been, but they have been extra, extra responsible and really useful, and they both now know what they're doing. One morning, Doug, one morning, Donald wasn't see, wasn't wasn't feeling well. He was ill and not and not being able to move and not being able to move. What's wrong, Donald? asked Douglas. Dougie, said Donald. I'm not feeling so good. So, I think you have to do some work with, work with the others without me. Don't worry, said Douglas. I'll do as you say. They were about, they were about to continue their plan when the fat controller bustled in. When the fat controller bustled in. An import, some important visitors are going to the. Some important visitors are to be shown around the sites of Sodor, and Dot, and Donald is to take the, is, and and Donald is to take the visit, is to take is to take them around the sites of Sodor, while Douglas will help will help Arthur it, Arthur and Arthur and Dan at the yards, and the fat controller walked away. Do you think you can manage? said Douglas. No, said Donald. We have to change tenders. It's the only way. And their drivers and finance all started the plan. At last the twins had managed to swap tenders, but had their nameplates taken off. But had their nameplates taken off. Douglas was number nine, and Donald was number ten. They were about to leave when Arthur suddenly crept up behind them. Donald and Douglas, he, he said, who would have thought that you two would be swapping tenders again? The fat controller wouldn't be happy if he found out that, that you two hadn't learnt your lessons properly, said Arthur. Donald and Douglas were scared. Poor, poor Donald isn't ill, said said Douglas. So so I have to do his tra do his so I have to pull his train while 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 you help Dan at the yards, but promise you won't tell anyone. I won't said Arthur and Arthur kept his promise and then carried on. Just then however, Douglas as Donald puffed out of the yards while Arthur had to pull Donald and with that the two got out of the yards and left. Meanwhile at the station the passengers were waiting for, for were waiting for for Donald to Donald to show himself. But Douglas, who was masquerading as Donald Finally arrived. The, the new visitors were pleased to see Donald. Were very pleased to see Donald or Douglas. Well, 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 well they said. Douglas, Douglas or Donald, is it? That Douglas or Donald, is it? They said. Oh yes, said said Douglas. I am Donald. He said. Get in quickly, please. And the, and so the visitors did. Douglas was coupled to, to, to Donald's coach. The guard blew his whistle, and then Douglas, and then Douglas popped quickly out of the station with the coach. Just meanwhile, the visitors began enjoying their ride, no matter what, and they were beginning to love it, as, as Douglas was pulling them well. Just then, however, he was worried about something. He was worried that Arthur would tell that he was worried that Arthur would tell the fat controller that 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 he and that he and Donald were in a masquerading game. And with that he ignored it and continued on and continued on with Donald's job. Meanwhile at the meanwhile back at the yards there was trouble. Arthur was trying to think of a good hiding spot hiding spot to, to hide Donald in so that Dan won't find him anywhere. 
I'm worried, Arthur, said Donald, because I'm not feeling well. Don't worry, said Arthur. N Den isn't going to come here this time. He's busy doing his work. But Arthur was wrong. And suddenly there was a shock in front of them. Den came out of the tunnel with some sled trucks from Blue Mountain Quarry. He found... He found... He found he and... He found Arthur and Doug... He found Arthur and Do Donald at the yards. While... While he saw... While he saw the number 10 on... While he saw the number 10 on Doug... On Douglas's tender. Hi, Douglas. Said, said Dan, are you here to do work? Leave him out of this, said, said, said Arthur. Douglas isn't feeling well, aren't you, Douglas? No, I'm not, said, said Donald. I have, I have a boiler ache, and you must, must buzz off. Yeah, said Arthur. Go back and do your work. I'll finish it with you later. For now, I've got, I've got poor Douglas on the, on the other, on the other back of me feeling ill. Grrr, growled Dan, as Dan put Crossy away to do his work. Arthur soon continued, but was still not doing his work. At last, Arthur had done it. He had, he had found the carriage shed and shunted Donald into the carriage shed where no one can find him. You'll be safe in here, whispered Arthur, and I promise I won't tell on the fat controller. Thank you, Arthur, said, said Donald. I'm, I'm happy I trust you. You're welcome, said Arthur, and Arthur puffed quietly away while, Doug, while Donald was having his nap. But just then there was trouble. Den had just finished his work when he found Donald at the carriage shed. Douglas, he said, what are you doing in here? You're meant to be doing your work. This made Donald very cross. I'm ill, remember? Now buzz off. And with that, the two start to argue. Arthur bustled in to see, to, to see, to see what was going on. Den, he said, clear off. And stop picking on poor Douglas, he said. Well, you were meant to be doing my, doing your work with me, grumbled, grumbled Dan. I'm telling the fat controller on you both. And Dan, and Dan stumbled away. Don't worry, said, said Arthur. I won't let him tell, tell on you. You know I wouldn't do that. Thanks, said Donald. Now get me out of here before... Before the time comes, and with that, the two were ready to get their plan started. Meanwhile, back at Crosby Station, Douglas, who was masquerading as, Do as Donald, took the visitors home. Thank you for your pleasant show around the sights of Sodor, Donald. They said, we hope you, we do come back again. Pleasure, said, said Douglas, and the passengers had left. And then it was time for Douglas to go. He left the coach at the he left the coach at the station, and he and he bustled in to find Donald and Arthur. <coughs> Meanwhile, back at the main line, more trouble began. Arthur was Arthur was slowing down. He was almost out of water and couldn't keep up forever. I have to stop," said Arthur. I'm, I'm nearly running low on water. You can't, Arthur, said, said Donald. You've only just made it. You've just saved my life. I can't, Donald, said Arthur. And with that, Arthur had to stop. He had run out of water and couldn't keep up. Darn it, went Douglas in his unwell tone. I'm not feeling well, and Arthur had just run out of water. They were both alone, but not for long. Douglas was about to go home when he found Arthur. What's happened here? he said. I've run out of water, said Arthur, and I need your help. 
Douglas smiled. I promise I'll help, he said. He buffered up to Arthur. His driver and fireman coupled, coupled Douglas, to, Douglas to Arthur, and with a mighty heave, he pulled Arthur and Donald up the hill, and with their mighty heave, since Douglas was the strongest, he, he became so strong and wise that he had never felt so much strength before. Arthur was impressed, so even Donald as well, and with that, Douglas had managed to had managed to pull his to pull his trusting friend and his twin up the hill and until they reached downhill. And at last, however, their and at last, however, their day had ended when their day had ended when sunset began. At last. The at last the day ended when Donald and Douglas had got their nameplates back and switched back into their original tenders and had and and that and had yet distru distrust distrusted their own counterpart and and trusting friend as well. Dougie, said Donald, I have a feeling that Arthur's going to tell the fat controller on us about what we're doing. Make sure he doesn't play a trick on us and try to keep an eye on him. You, you two both know I won't tell. I won't tell on him," said Arthur. "It, it, enough of your nonsense," said Douglas, as the twins, as the twins kept the the distrusting eye on Arthur. Poor Arthur didn't know what to do, and with that, the the three engines both didn't know what the fat controller would find out about this.